Hey what's up everyone, welcome to FX Maniac, this is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again. Welcome to another really cool tutorial. I'll show you guys how to create this uh, realistic, uh, you know, fruit splash effect. Uh, this one was an early test, so it was kind of fast, I didn't get the results. I mean, it was, it was fine, but I didn't get the proper results, so this one was a little, you know, better so it was a little bit more slower and got a little bit more detail and some more like splashes here but yeah here is the effect so I'll show you guys how to set this up using 3d studio max and Phoenix FD so if you are ready let's get started uh, but before we begin I just wanted to thank you guys for supporting me my videos and my channel so if you're new here you are very welcome to subscribe and support me as we go on with this journey and uh, yeah so let's get started so I'm gonna go into 3d studio max I'm just gonna walk you through the scene so first off I have some uh, 3d models of these fruits so we have a peach an apple and a lemon right so these are some really high quality great models um, but you can use like models from the internet you can download them you know there are free models everywhere. So what I did was, if I solo these, so I'm going to control select them and I'm going to go right click isolate selection. So I've animated them sort of like a movement to emulate like them sort of falling onto a watery surface and then they get slow and then slowly kind of rotate. So you could have you could have used like you know there's a, something called active bodies in Phoenix FD so you, you could have done that but that is a whole different story so I just wanted to get that splash effect right this can be any object so I just hand animated them so it looks uh, they're looking fine so it's all right and then I'm just gonna go right click and isolate then I went ahead uh, make sure your unit setup is correct so going to unit setup centimeters and one unit is one centimeter so okay. Then I went ahead and created a grid. So I'll just go into Phoenix FD. Where is it? Phoenix FD. Um, liquid Sim. So I just created a grid around the area. So uh, you want to make sure that it is like, you know, the fruits are above. So they, they're just off camera. And the grid is there. And I've simulated a couple of frames. So I'm just going to go and walk you through the, you know, the grid settings so what I did was I w I've actually had quite a few tests with this so so it took me like two days of playing around to be able to get this right so I went into grid and I have the final resolution is uh, 12 million 12, 12 and a half it could have been I mean a lot more but I just wanted to do it for the tutorial sake of course if you're doing it for your own uh, I mean like a project thing you would you would want to increase the resolution a lot more and the other thing is the most important thing here is the dynamic section so initially if I hit F3 I wanted the I wanted water to be there right so if you go into the example the water is there and the fruits are just uh, you know sort of splashing inside and you know colliding with it so it's looking pretty beautiful so what I did was I went to 3d studio select the grid into the dynamic section um, I've set the initial fill up to 65 percent so 65 percent of the grid is initially filled with mesh and with liquid particles and then these fruits of course they're gonna because they are gonna come inside the grid they're gonna collide with the uh, liquid and the most important factor here is uh, if I if I explain some more settings I'll tell you here so I've set the steps per frame to three as I've said in my previous videos if you have a very high uh, moving liquid or smoke or fire or whatever uh, it just in increases the quality you know and make it more accurate so the more steps you have the more time it's gonna take but it's gonna be a lot more accurate and the value that made the huge difference is the time scale. So it is basically like how slow you want the simulation to be. So if I go back to Premiere Pro, so I have this kind of like a normal speed. So you don't get much of a splash or anything. But then I have this one, which is 0.3. So you get a lot more, you know, 
a lot more splash because it's a lot more slower and you have a lot more collisions and then you have a lot more foam that is emitting off of it so and the other factor that is very important and it is relevant to this so they go side to side is that if you're having an object which is colliding with your uh, liquid if I go into Phoenix select them all right click Phoenix FD properties you have this motion velocity effect so the higher it is the more you know splash and the more collision and the bigger uh, the collision is going to be so if, if you say it's like 10 there's going to be a lot more splashes but then you know you want to make sure that you don't set it high enough especially when you have a f slow moving liquid because it is gonna you know they're gonna combine together so make sure to find a balance so you have to play around with it like a few times to be able to get what I'm saying right so uh, you need to be able to do some tests and then you'll get it uh, I mean I, as I said before you could have used like active bodies but uh, like probably I'll do another tutorial on it so it could have been a lot more better um, and the other thing is we have foam so when they collide so you have these little foam particles I mean uh, if you look at real reference they could have been a bit larger and some more random sizes even though I've set them up that way so I've enabled foam and then when you enable foam you have this particle shader which you go ahead and add your Phoenix FD grid and then I've just turned down the multiplier for the diffuse because they were just a little too bright and then I've added some size variation 0.83 and the of course the count multiplier I mean the default value is a little too much so you can control the amount of foam particles by here so I've just set it to like 0.07 and uh, yeah you can control the size and the count so if it's a little too much or too less you can go ahead and play around with this value and on to the lighting part so I have uh, five different lights and they're basically instance so whenever I change one value they'll just update for everything you do want to make sure if I if I uh, go to my camera view so I have this camera view you do want to make sure that your light is not hitting the uh, liquid I mean directly because that look a bit weird you know you see here just the top I mean it is visible but uh, it doesn't really matter but you shouldn't be like in front of the grid because we would get a strange square looking reflection here and we don't want that so yeah and the more lights you have the more I mean because you know water and transparent objects are 100% based on their environment so you have to have a few different lights and right now we have like five so yeah you can control the intensity and everything and then I've just set a camera and that is basically it I mean it took me like two days to like find these values and set it up but uh, hopefully you can you've you've got an idea of how to create like a realistic water splash uh, using Phoenix FD. I mean these can be any objects. Can, they can be like text or, or anything, you know, phones. So you get the idea. But the final result is this. So you can you can go ahead and see it. You can go ahead and make it more slow mo and animate them accordingly. But yeah, so here's just a test for the tutorial. Uh, so yeah that is basically what I did in a nutshell and I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, and I hope you learned something from it and as always if you have any questions or things you've missed uh, you can go ahead and post in the comments for this uh, tutorials section and uh, if you're new here and if you find my information useful and uh, you know you like it make sure to give it a thumbs up it would mean a lot to me and if you haven't subscribed yet it would mean a lot to me if you just subscribe you know that is that goes without saying so yeah and if you need some high quality royalty free no copyright music you can go ahead and check out our audio aura channel so we present some really high quality music and we're constantly trying to update our collection so my channel is brand new so you can go ahead and support me there and if you want to join my instagram page you can go ahead and click on this uh, instagram account my youtube banner and it will take you there fix what so yet and check out some of my works so yeah that is basically the today's tutorial hope you enjoyed it and uh till the next one enjoy working